people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Lipakshi Kurana with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. In the past six months, the Indian Ocean island Sri Lanka has become an altogether different country. And while the data and surveys might have put it at a better position in happiness indices, the pictures at ground speak in stark contrast. The protracted anti-government protests have entered another week with people intensifying their demands for the president's resignation. The crisis have also ushered in a new lifestyle for people who have ditched their bikes and cars and have picked bicycles to commute to their offices. Hundreds of Buddhist monks held a peaceful protest in Sri Lanka's commercial capital Colombo and vowed not to leave until the government of President Gotabaya Rajapaksa is thrown out. The monks gathered outside the main railway terminal and walked to nearby Buddhist temple where they held a peaceful protest. Earlier, they held placards demanding the government implement the proposals of the chief monks of the four main Buddhist chapters. <laughs> Economic mismanagement and the aftermath of COVID-19 have left the cash-strapped country of 22 million people unable to pay for essential imports of food, fertilizer, medicines and fuel because of a severe dollar crunch. Inflation reached 54.6% in June as the Indian Ocean nation battles its worst economic crisis in decades and the central bank is expected to raise rates at its next policy announcement. Speaking after a recent visit by an IMF delegation, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe outlined a roadmap in Parliament to chart a way out of the crisis. However, this hasn't been able to cool down the tempers of common people. In a separate incident, hundreds of protesters gathered near the parliament building were hit with water cannons and tear gas as they launched what they called the final push of the struggle to topple the government of President Gotabaya Rajapaksa. The protests have been led by young people and supported by opposition political parties, trade union and civil society activists and ordinary civilians. The government seems to have exhausted all available options but has failed to bring the crisis under control. People continue to face the pain of hours-long queues. However, in such a situation, there are also people who have switched to a completely different mode of lifestyle. Throwing a backpack over his shoulders and a helmet over his head, 41-year-old Tusheta Kahaduwa hops onto his bicycle to pedal off to work through the chaotic streets of Colombo. Tushita Kahaduwa is among thousands of Sri Lankans who are ditching their vehicles at home and switching to bicycles to commute and go about their daily lives since the cash-strapped country was hit with a crippling fuel shortage, resulting in long lines at petrol stations. <laughs> Polling will in the la polling petrol in a ranchi balala, at the water WhatsApp group balala, him a good trikara, may petrol gahagana, may Purvantra petrol eight, Puho Parisam of Pavichikaragana, Duanda Belwake, practical Vedak name. Then petrol polymagilla, Isselama Pai, the Kaituna, it was a way Hatai, Hai, Yatai. It was an antimatamama then Sati the Hekata, Tunaka Isella polymagatia, Davas Tuna. A 
amidst the fuel shortage inspired two wheel frenzy bicycle shop owners appear to be the only people who are having a good time as their stocks are running out like never before experts however say that this might be a good step towards people's health but this is not a voluntary step and the country has to come out of the crisis in order to achieve some real growth Sri Lanka hasn't received new fuel shipments in about 2 weeks and the government to date hasn't announced when new stocks will arrive. Faced with severely depleted petrol and diesel stocks, the government last week closed schools, asked public employees to work from home and started rationing fuel to essential services. Sri Lanka will present its debt restructuring plan to the International Monetary Fund in August to push forward talks to lock in a 3 billion dollar bailout package. However, the country's financial woes are expected to take time to resolve as they will involve structural changes to put public finances and debt sustainability back on track. And moving on while Afghanistan is riddled with different forms of humanitarian and socio-political and economic crisis there is one component to the problem that has been underreported over time it is the large swaths of territories that are nestled with landmines there are few agencies that have been helping demining the area but it is just not proving to be enough in the absence of adequate funds the country is staring at a larger threat that has already killed several people especially the children who have treaded the region inadvertently these men in a straight line wearing protective vests are mine clearance workers from danish refugee council scanning a barren patch of land with their equipment They install a flag near even a barely visible device in the dirt and then connect it by wires that are hundreds of meters long to a small makeshift control center. The countdown begins and the device blows up and the deminers return to continue their work. A large part of the area that was used as a battlefield by different forces in the long era of war in Afghanistan is filled with mines. and demining that region has become one of the biggest challenges the country has faced in a long time people have lost their lives sometimes limbs which leave them paralyzed for their entire lives in the absence of a good healthcare system in the country the issue of of landmined landmines and unexploded uh, ordinances is a very very big problem in afghanistan afghanistan is actually one of the most contaminated countries on earth The UN Mining Agency estimates that almost 80% of civilian casualties from explosive remnants of war are children, partly due to their curiosity as well as their regular role in collecting scrap metal to sell to bolster families' incomes. In the 7 months to March, about 300 Afghan children were killed or maimed by landmines and other unexploded devices according to the UN's Children's Agency. At a Red Cross hospital nearby, the effects of the landmine problem are clear as dozens of Afghans, including young children, walk across the hallway with their prosthesis. Experts say the country will continue to face a similar fate if it doesn't get enough financial assistance from others. Landmines need to go and it can happen only with the integrated efforts of all, they say. Victims of the blast say they didn't get enough opportunity. The Bukandar Vlad can not take a lamb. He can not take a man. When he cut a lamb, do all the premium at the last hour. Can he not take a lamb? He did all the things on good. So the traffic is mine. Good, but mine is not the common nature. We are 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 not the common nature. Experts believe that the Taliban's return to power last summer should have helped demining efforts with swaths of territory that were off limits during the fighting finally accessible. However, the foreign governments have now frozen development aid to the Afghan government, unwilling to send their money 
which has only toughened the task. The West and the US have refrained from providing support in view of the potential threats that could emerge with the resurgence of terrorist groups, including Al-Qaeda, which was responsible for 9-11 attacks. And this has resulted in the Afghan government agency that oversees mine clearance losing its roughly $3 million funding and laid off about 120 staff in April, the majority of the organization, because it couldn't pay salaries. Hundreds of devices have been detonated in the vicinity in this region alone, but almost 40,000 square miles still need to be cleared. Moving on, India's unmatched growth story received a new feather in its cap when its annual FDI inflow amounted to over 83 billion US dollars last financial year. And now the country is projected to receive 100 billion dollars this year. We show you through our show how the government's assertive policies, coupled with investors' increased interest in the democratic India, are paying rich dividends. India's continuously expanding market, coupled with the government's pro-business policies, are proving to be a boon for the country's economy. After registering a slowdown in the early phases of the COVID-19 pandemic, India's economy has bounced back with a sharp rise in foreign direct investments, FDIs. With ease of doing business-centered reforms a priority for the government, major foreign players are making a beeline for India. And the numbers do not lie. India recorded a surge in FDIs for the ninth consecutive year, receiving FDIs worth 83.57 billion USD in the last financial year alone, a historic high. This is a 23% rise in FDI inflows since the pandemic outbreak and a nearly 20-fold increase in the last 18 years. While the Russia-Ukraine war has severely affected the global trade equilibrium, many experts have expressed confidence in a resilient Indian economy. Our trade with Western countries has not come down. It has, there has been a leap, a quantum leap in relation to uh, trade with Western countries also. At the same time, our trade with Russia has seen tremendous boost up as such. The sectors that performed exceedingly well last year were computer software and hardware. They emerged on top with around a 25% share of total foreign investments received by India in 2021, followed by the services sector and the automobile industry. As per India Brand Equity Foundation, a government agency, the Indian manufacturing industry, which registered a 76% growth in the last financial year, is poised to become a global hub by 2030. Both domestic and international economic observers have also predicted that India will touch the coveted $100 billion mark in foreign direct investments this year. Our credibility in international markets is also improving. So in my opinion that it will not be difficult for India to achieve the target of 100 billion USD. With restrictions lifted on foreign investment in sectors like insurance and defense, foreign investors have Indian companies high on their radar. Experts believe liberalization of sectors in the Indian economy are a welcome sign to foreign investors and is a signal to the world to invest in brand India. And time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Iran said this week that it sought a strong and lasting nuclear agreement with world powers following talks with US ally Qatar on easing stalled efforts to revive a 2015 nuclear pact. Qatari Foreign Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani visited Tehran a week after EU mediated indirect US Iran talks in Doha failed to break a deadlock, hindering efforts to resurrect the nuclear agreement. Iran has said that Washington must decide if it wants a deal or insists on sticking to its unilateral demands. 
Under the 2015 deal, Iran curbed its uranium enrichment work, a potential pathway to nuclear weapons, in exchange for relief from economic sanctions. But former U.S. President Donald Trump pulled the United States out of the pact in 2018 and reimposed tough economic sanctions, prompting Tehran to breach many of the deal's nuclear limitations. And after almost a year of indirect negotiations in Vienna, the broad outline of a revived deal was agreed. But then talks broke down in March, largely over Tehran's demand that Washington remove its revolutionary guards from a U.S. terrorism list. The United States refused, arguing that this was outside the scope of reviving the agreement. Taiwan's Air Force showed off its new locally designed and made jet trainer this week, touting the more advanced, combat-capable abilities of the aircraft that will replace aging and accident-prone existing equipment. Taiwan's armed forces are mostly equipped by the United States, but President Tsai Ing-wen has made development of an advanced homegrown defense industry a priority, especially as China, which claims the island as its own, steps up military modernization efforts and drills near Taiwan. The new 85 Brave Eagle, made by state-owned Aerospace Industrial Development Corps, with a budget of $2.3 billion, had its first test flight in 2020. It is Taiwan's first jet made domestically since the FCK-1 Chinko Indigenous Defense Fighter, or IDF, rolled out more than three decades ago, and the two jets look similar and have similar capabilities. In the recent Sanrio Character Ranking 2022, the number one position was given to Cinema Role. With more than 60 years of experience, Sanrio has created many popular characters like Hello Kitty, Cinema Role, Pom Pom Purin, Kiromi and others. President of Sanrio, Mr. Tomokuni Suji, explains the company policy and character breeding as well. やっぱり人と人とをつなぐであったりとか、やっぱりコミュニケーションビジネス、やっぱり人と人とをつなぐであったりとかっていうところが我々がやってきたビジネスなんですね。で、キャラクターっていうのは思い思いの代弁者、い
This is computer software that combines songs with favorite voice. It is the Vocaloid. It is used for promotion of characters on the website. Japanese character business is developing business to create many more characters that are making fans worldwide. And moving on, the Jagannath Chariot Festival is a unique celebration where deity Jagannath, an incarnation of Lord Vishnu, is worshipped along with his siblings. In a massive show of fervor and devotion, tens of thousands of people from across the country gather in the Indian town of Puri to pull the chariots of Lord Jagannath, his brother Balbhadra and his sister Subhadra. The festival now is celebrated with great fervor across India and Nepal. Have a look. A sea of devotees was witnessed in the Indian town of Puri as tens of thousands of people gathered to witness the pulling of beautifully decorated juggernauts of Hindu deity Jagannath, his brother Balbhadra and sister Subhadra. These structures resembling temples carry the three main Hindu deities. Following years of tradition, Lord Jagannath is taken out on a chariot and taken to the famous Gundicha Mata temple where the Lord rests for seven days. After this, the return journey of Lord Jagannath begins. Dressed in shades of yellow and red, devotees dance their way around the streets of Puri to commemorate the festival. Devotees consider the pulling of the chariots with ropes a pious deed. दो साल के बाद हम सबको मौका मिल रहा है रथ खींचने के लिए और बहुत ही खुशी का माहौल आप देख रहे हैं इतना भीड़ है यहाँ पर और आज तीनों भगवान अपने मौसी के घर जाएंगे और इसके लिए हम बहुत खुश हैं जय जगन्नाथ The chariot festival is celebrated in other parts of India too In Kolkata the rath yatra was carried out by the International Society for Krishna Consciousness popularly known as ISKCON a prototype of Puri chariot and idol left the temple premises from Albert Road to wind around the city until it reached the Brigade Parade Ground where it stands for the next seven days. Adding to the festivities, a mesmerizing dance performance in praise of Lord Jagannath was performed by dancers. Jagannath is the Jagat. People say that it is not our Odisha. Yes, in Odisha we are. लेकिन ये जगत का नाथ है जगत मिन से पूरा विश्व तो सभी का वो नाथ है तो इसलिए जगन्नाथ जी जो मंदिर में एक वो परंपरा का हिसाब से कुछ लोग जा नहीं पाते तो जगन्नाथ जी आज के दिन तिथि के अनुसार वो मौसी के यहाँ जाते हैं तो मौसी का वो एक बहाना है तो जगन्नाथ बोलते हैं कि वो मेरा सारा भक्त है पूरा विश्व मेरा भक्त है तो इसलिए मैं वो बड़ा दंड पे इसलिए निकलते हैं कि वो सबको दर्शन किसी भी उसका हो तो वो सबका सबको दर्शन दे सके तो इसलिए इसकी ये जो परंपरा चली आ रही है जो जगन्नाथ जी की पूरी में तो होता ही है और यहाँ पे 40 साल से हो ही जा रहा है। not just India, neighboring country Nepal too soaked in festivities of annual chariot festival of Hindu Lord Jagannath with great enthusiasm and religious fervor. Hundreds of devotees were seen singing and dancing during the festival. So I'm very happy and extremely satisfied uh, with the festival of Jagannath Rath Yatra. They walked onto the streets of Kathmandu, pulling the chariot to detour the city, chanting hymns, hailing Lord Jagannath and siblings. It is believed that the chariot festival is observed to unite people and foster peace and harmony in the world. Well, the English word Jagannath has its roots in Jagannath after the majestic sizes of the chariots and the celebrations. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. 
civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.